Thank you, Imona. Uh, our next uh, speaker is Dr. Brita Hardy, and she will talk about therapeutic angiogenesis in cardiovascular diseases. Brita, please. The subject of this talk is therapeutic angiogenesis in cardiovascular disease. The work was conducted in the Felsenstein Medical Research Center at the Rabin Medical Center, and it is uh, in collaboration with uh, Professor Alexander Butler, the head of uh, cardiology. Okay. Okay. Angiogenesis, the sprouting of new blood vessels, as you can see here, is a complex process that uh, uh, includes many uh, participants, cells, um, soluble factors, extracellular matrix, but uh, the key... Uh, um, participant is the endothelial cells that you can see are sprouting here to form new capillaries which is the, really the process of uh, angiogenesis. Angiogenesis research will probably change the face of medicine in the next decades with more than 500 million people worldwide predicted to benefit from pro or anti-angiogenesis treatment. This statement um, uh, is also reflected by the number of publications that uh, um, increased 100 times in the last uh, decade. And why is that? The realization that angiogenesis really underlines uh, more than uh, 70 disorders so far, and the list is still growing. Um, angiogenesis is implicated in many diseases uh, like cardiovascular diseases, cancer, um, um, diabetes, diabetic retinopathy, um, and, 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 another, and so many other uh, diseases. Ischemia of the heart, brain, and limb is the leading cause of morbidity and mortality worldwide. And we know now that uh, atherosclerosis uh, in cardiovascular disease is, uh, is the reason of one to three deaths, and this epidemic will probably sustain uh, for many more years. So the concept of therapeutic angiogenesis that defines the treatment of ischemic diseases by inducing capillary growth um, has arisen in the mid-80s, and the main uh, target for this was pa were patients with, uh, um, uh, with cardiovascular disease, ischemia of the cardiovascular disease, and, uh, and, and uh, ischemia of the legs. How do I go to the next one? Our contribution and hopefully solution are new novel pop, uh, compounds that will uh, target for new uh, for therapeutic angiogenesis. We have, we are, I'm going to describe you two novel peptides that induce angiogenesis under hypoxic conditions and alleviate Hindley ischemia. The mechanism of this angiogenesis is VEGF-independent, vascular endothelial growth factor independent pathway that avoids pathological angiogenesis. The new target for this angiogenesis is a stress protein GRP78 that we have discovered as a receptor on endothelial cells that induces angiogenesis in a VEGF-independent uh, pathway. So who are those two peptides? The two peptides, which are really peptides from two peptide families, one of them is a synthetic peptide that we have identified from screening a phage display peptide library on endothelial cells under hypoxic conditions. We screened this library, this random uh, library, and we uh, uh, identified several peptides. One of them we nominated ROY, R-O-Y, uh, binds to, the, to this uh, GRP receptor and induces angiogenesis. 
What you can see here is a demonstration of angiogenesis function in vitro. We have about six or seven assays that we can do, but we'll show you two of them. The tube formation, you can see endothelial cells in the presence of 10 nanograms of this peptide induce multi-layer um, um, structure of a tube compared to control. If we put this peptide in a chamber that we assay migration of endothelial cell, we can see that migration of those cells in the presence of um, the peptide under hypoxic conditions, 20 nanograms induced migration of, uh, of the endothelial cells, which is a function typical for angiogenesis. The second peptide is also derived from a group of uh, uh, several um, peptides that we have synthesized and identified from, um, from an ADAM15 a transmembrane glycoprotein. It's a very large protein, glycoprotein, that has a, um, um, has a transmembrane a part that uh, uh, is a, a um, how do you say it, uh, um, induces an, an enzymatic reaction that we, at, this, at that area of the uh, en enzyme, cleaved found the peptide, and we synthesized several peptides in this area. When we take this peptide, we can see that indeed it induces also tube formation and it induces a migration of endothelial cells. The main aspect that we wanted to see whether those peptides will induce um, Hindlim ischemia um, restoration, I mean, uh, will treat Hindlim ischemia. For this, we took a model of a mouse Hindlim where we excised the femoral artery, as you can see here, and we followed the perfusion of uh, blood in those uh, legs compared to the non-treated leg. We can see here that after 21 days, in the presence of the peptide, we get a restoration of blood perfusion, as is also reflected in this uh, figure. Okay. You can see the above uh, is the two uh, concentrations of ROI, and later we have the PBS, and we have uh, the scrambled ROI peptide. Blood perfusion restoration is also expressed in the... Um, presence of uh, many capillaries, as you can see in the uh, picture on the right side, compared to the control. The ADOPE peptide, which is derived from the ADAM15 uh, transmembrane pre um, um, protein, um, we uh, made three peptides, and we can uh, see that the best one, which, which we nominate ADOPEP1, also restores the blood perfusion in ischemic limb, just as you have seen uh, before in the, for, the other, for the ROI peptide. Um, we have a lot of work done uh, and still are doing on the mechanism of action. We know that the GRP, a heat shock protein, was identified as the peptide binding receptor on endothelial cells under hypoxic conditions. By the way, this uh, receptor is increased under hypoxia, and that can uh, contribute to the finding that we have uh, really re revealed this receptor with, with a peptide that binds endothelial cells under hypoxic conditions and, uh, and not under normal uh, regular conditions. We have those uh, two uh, peptides that we have studied for inhibition of uh, um, hypoxia-induced apoptosis. Hypoxia is inducing apoptosis, and in the presence of those two peptides, there is inhibition of hypoxia-induced apoptosis and not inhibition of uh, apoptosis by other um, uh, components. Um, we have also studied the, the binding of the peptides to endothelial cell that uh, um, uh, induces uh, um, phosphorylation of uh, um, ERK-1 and 2 and AKT-1, 2 and 3, which are signal transductions, um, uh, pathways uh, for um, uh, apoptosis and uh, proliferation and, uh, and uh, migration of uh, cells. Okay, the summary, to summarize, this study contributes to the search for new molecules for therapeutic angiogenesis. We have shown two novel peptides that have, are effective as inducer of angiogenesis, that the mechanism is a new mechanism independent of VEGF, 
and activates a new target molecule, a GRP78. We are now wrapping up experiments in diabetic and atherosclerotic mice uh, showing the effect of the peptide uh, to uh, increase the blood perfusion and restore perfusion, blood perfusion in uh, the ischemic uh, limb. Our first objective is really to treat uh, uh, no option patients that uh, are poor candidates for uh, angioplasty or surgical uh, revascularization. Thank you very much. I want to say that in this study uh, participated Dr. Anna Dreiter, who is here with me, and the other people in the lab. Thank you.